Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people. Teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. On the Sabbath day. Bring it out! What should we not be doing on the Sabbath day? We're gonna read according to the Bible because today is the Lord's Sabbath day. Right. Read. Nehemiah chapter 10 and verse 31. Bring it out. And if the people of the land bring well or individuals on the Sabbath day to sell. If anybody brought anything to sell to us on the Sabbath day, any exchange of money or goods on the Sabbath day, what will happen? That we were not buying of them. We were not what? That we were not buying of them. So on the Sabbath day, there is no buying or selling. Right. There is no money transactions. Right. But you do your fundraising on the other days of the week. But right. on the Sabbath right. day is the day of rest. Right. Because we don't understand. If we kept the Sabbath day, what would God have done for us? In Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. We don't out. understand how God works. If you follow God, he will bless you. If right. you don't do what God tells you to do, he will curse you. That's but right. we're going to listen to the blessing if you keep God's Sabbath day. Right. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. Now, and it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high. God will set you where? That the Lord thy God will set thee on high. If we listen to God's commandments, we will no longer be in the ghetto. That's we right. will no longer be in the hood. Because God said he will set us on high. We upon all nations of the earth. No, equal to all nations on the earth. Upon all nations of the earth. God said when we keep his commandments, we won't have to come on the street and beg for money. Yes, God said he will put us above all the nations on the earth. Yes. That's what the Bible says. Right. That's what God says. Yes, he will put right. the Israelites, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans above all nations. Yes, you right. said no, that's probably not true. Give me Exodus chapter 19 and verse 5. Yeah. We're going to prove all things. Because our people are confused and they think God is the God of everybody. Right. No, he is the God of Israel. Yes, he is the right. Israelites, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Yes, right. yes. chapter 19 and verse 5. Uh -huh. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, uh -huh. then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine. You see that, brother? We're just reading that God said that if we listen to his commandments, he will put us above all people on the earth. Uh, hey, bro. Hold on, hold on, bro. How you doing, bro? What's going on? What's your name, man? Rock. My name is Daniel. So what we out here doing right now is showing our people who they truly are according to the Bible. That's right. What's your nationality? Let me ask you real quick. I know you got to go, but let me ask you, what's your nationality? I am a dark man, black man. You are a black man. Okay, okay. Let me, I'm going to build with you on that. So you say you are a black man. Can you tell me what is the language of black man? English. Huh? It's also English. You said the black man uh, language is English. 
Or it could, or it could be French. I mean, okay, where, where is the land of black? I mean, from the paper it say Israel. I you're mean. right, right. But you say, I'm, I'm showing you that what you're saying that you're black, black is just a color in the crayon box. That's right. Black cannot be a nationality. You understand? So we're showing you that your true nationality is the Israelite. That's right. right. That's you are God's chosen people. Because you can't tell me the language of the black man. You can't tell me the land of the black man, right? You can't tell me um, what his history is because our history here, being black, starts in slavery, right? Oh, yes, right. When every February, they remind us, remember, you was a slave, right. February 1st. No, every year, that's what they do, right? They call it what? Black History Month. Right. Yep. That's the history of our slavery, but we're showing you that God said that you are the greatest man that works on this earth. Yes. You are not a slave. And how do we prove it? It's through the scripture. Right. Let me ask you, do you see yourself on the sign right here? Oh yeah. Okay. Come here, come, come, come. We ain't here to hurt you. I know I was loud before, but sometimes some things gotta be put to a certain point. <laughs> uh, where you see yourself on the sign right here? Okay. Okay. Right. So these are the twelve tribes of Israel, coming from our forefathers, right? These are actual people that were in the Bible, right? And they had children. So each of these children represents their tribe. You understand? So, for instance, where would you say you identify yourself as black? If you look on the sign here, you should see Judah, right? It's the first one. The very one on the very top. So the tribe of Judah will be the so-called black man here in America today. That's right. You understand? So that's what we're proving through the scriptures. How do we know that the tribe of Judah is that so-called African-American here in America? Yep. Right? How do we know that? How do we prove that? That's the question you should be asking. What was the question again? How do we know the black man here in America is from an Israelite from the tribe of Judah? Because of the color of his skin and also Okay, so how do we know he's an Israelite? Because they're not telling you that in the school, right? Could that be where it originated from? It originated from, yes, but how do we know that? How do you prove that you're an Israelite? No, well, I could be kind of smart, but I don't know this. So I okay. Might, I might need to help. Oh, so you, you, you been smoking? No, sir. Oh, I think you said you've been sparking. No, bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I asked you. So, understand, we're going to prove according to the scriptures who are the Israelites, and we're going to prove it through the Bible. That's right. By future yeah. prophecy. Right. Give me uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. You got yeah. it? It's only going to take a second, so hang in there real quick. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. Yeah. But it shall come to pass. So it said, it shall come to pass, meaning a future prophecy. Read. If thou were not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. What does hearken mean? To listen. Oh, pray you don't listen. To observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. Uh -huh. That all these curses, yeah. curses thee, shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So if the Israelites did not listen to God and do his commandments, curses will be put upon them. Right? So now we're going to read about some of the curses and what they're for. Give me verse 46 real quick. Verse 46. Uh -huh. And they, they talking about the curses, me, shall be upon thee for a sign. So let me ask you, what is a sign? A sign is something that gives you a warning. Okay. Or a fair brief or a fact about something. Okay, I like that. I'm going to roll with that. So, a sign pretty much identifies something, right? Right. So, for instance, right, you see the, the Burger King sign, right? You know that Burger King by the, the color of the sign and the print on there, right? You have Walmart, right? It has a sign on it. So, let me ask you, have you ever walked into Burger King thinking it was, more, uh, was Walmart? No, sir. No, why? Because of the nine similarities of the logo. Right, of the sign. The sign is distinct. It is specific. So you're not going to get it confused with something else. Right. God said the curses that were put upon us were specific. No other people on the earth ever went through what we did. And they shall be upon thee for a sign to identify and 
for a wonder. Because you're going to wonder why these signs are coming upon you, right? right. right. You wonder why you ever been the last high of the first five? Right. You ever wonder why we're getting shot down in the street? Right. We ever wonder why we're in the ghetto, in the barrio? You, know. you ever wonder why that? God said that the curses that will come upon us will be for us to wonder about, to think about, see? You know. And upon that seed forever. So they're going to be generational. Being passed out from father to son. If we look at, excuse me, if we look at our fathers, right? Our fathers are going through the same thing that we're going through today, right? right. They went through the civil rights movement, right? You know. So even today, we're still fighting for civil rights. Right. So guess what? God is saying that the curses that will come upon us are continuous. They're right. generational, right? Right. right? So what is one of the curses that are affecting us today? Let me show you one. Poverty. Poverty. I like that one. Give me verse 48. Verse 48. Therefore, shall thou serve thy enemy. God said one of the curses that would be a sign to identify the Israelites was that we would serve our enemy. Right. Enemies are people that oppose you. Right. Read. Therefore, shall we shall thou serve thy enemy, uh -huh. which the Lord shall send against thee. God sent them against us because we didn't listen to the commandments. Yes, Read. And hunger. And hunger. So guess what? We were going to serve our enemies, the people that oppose us, for hunger. When we look at the black man today in America, right? Because you said we identify ourselves as black. Where do we get our food resources from? Government. We get it from the government, okay? In specific, where do we get our resources here in Tallahassee? Where do you get your resources from? Where do you, go, you get them from going to work or school? Okay, I'm talking about food, hunger. I'm talking grocery about, store. Okay, who owns the grocery store? You know? Yeah. <laughs> who owns it? What store you shop at? Well, I shop at our store. Okay. Save a lot in all Save a lot in all, Walmart, stuff like that. The majority of those stores are owned by the so-called white man. Yes, yes. Right. The majority of those establishments are owned by white people. Yes, right. You have also other uh, nationalities. You have the Arab man. You have the uh, East Indian. Guess what? Most of those stores are owned by other nations. Right. We don't own our own stores. When we look, when we look at where they get the food from, where do they get it from? From them, themselves. We don't supply ourselves with our own food. This no. is part of being impoverished, or like you said, poverty. Yeah. This is part of poverty, right. because we can't get our own food. When we were slaves, many moons ago, right? Where do we get our food from? No, you didn't. Where do we get our food from? They had to grow it back then. But where did we get it? Can we just go in, in the cotton, the uh, cornfield and start picking out corn for ourselves? I'm oh, not. They can be shot down. For you that. get shot down for that. Yeah. Hell. You understand? So did we go? Where did we go to get our food when we was in the slave field? Yep. Well, basically the white man. The white man. Don't be scared of saying because this Bring is history. Up. They know it. They put it in the movies too. We're not saying that and racist, we're telling you biblical facts. Good. God said that we were going to serve enemies to buy our food, see? And hunger, and in thirst, and thirst. So for our water, where do we get our water from? You know. Here in Tallahassee, what's the name of the, the water company? You know, right? The water Tower. From the Water Tower, what's the name of the water company there? Okay, so usually in a city, what's the name of the water company here? Town Gas Electric. Yeah, Town Gas Electric, something like that? Okay, so when we look at every city that we go to, there's a company that gives or provides us water, right? Now, if you don't pay your water bill, what happens to that water? Bring it out! We'll shut it off. Then we'll right. shut it off. Right. So when we were in the slave field, in the cotton field, when we wore the water, where did we go to? You know. Yeah. To who? Can we go to Master's Well and take the water by ourselves? White man. We had to go to the white man. That's the same right. That we gotta go to the white man today. Right. Read on. And in thirst. And in thirst. And in nakedness. And in nakedness. Because let me ask you, on your clothing, does it say made in black? Read up. No, no, no. Does it say made in African American? 
Bring it out. Made in Negro? Bring it out. No. Bring it out. So our clothing, even to this very day, when we went slavery, he gave us our clothing, and yeah. today we have to go to that for our clothing. Right. We gotta go to China. We gotta go to uh, Taiwan. Right. We gotta go to Canada. Right. We gotta go to America for our clothing. Right. You understand? But then when we pick the cotton, bring it out. Then we pick the cotton. So how come we don't have any of those resources? Bring it right. out. God said we will have to serve them for our clothing. Right. Read. And in what? Of all things. So before you were talking about education, making yourself better, right? Getting a college education, getting a skill or some type of um, thing like that, right? God said we have to go to them in order to get the certification. Bring it up. What certification school do you know that a black man owns? Bring it up. Then you is owned by a black man. I'm trying to tell you, then you is not owned by a black man. Right. It's That's not right. owned by a black man. It only educates black people. Right. You understand? That is not our establishment. We did not build it, and we're not educating our own children. Right. You understand? Because if we if we actually owned it, you know we wouldn't have to. We could have charged the money that they charge over there. Yeah. You know that for a fact. But guess what? Because it's the white man's education. That's why we go over there. Right. Because we think it's better. God said we have to go to them for our education. Right, Your yeah. driver's license, you have to go for them. Social security card, you have to go to them. Guess what? If you want to die, you got to get a certificate from them to say that you're officially dead. Right. You understand? And what of all things, we have to go to other nations. We And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. So the enemy did what? And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. So let's look at this sign right here. You got it? You got it, you got it, you got it. So let me ask you when you look at this sign. Come on, you can come on. When you, you can come down. So when you look at this sign, who put the yokes of iron on their neck? Who put the yokes of iron on our neck? Who? The white man did. So who was the enemy that the scripture was talking about? Out. The so-called white man. That's That's good. You understand? They're not here to help us. God sent them for our punishment. How you doing, brother? What's your name? Brown, Minister Brown. Minister Brown? How you doing? Daniel, how you doing? So what we're showing you is that the prophecies in the Bible, you read the Bible a little bit? The prophecies within the Bible pertain to blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Yes, because the curses that fell upon them that we were just reading only happened to us. Right. We're going to prove that. We're going to prove that. Give me Daniel chapter 9, and verse 12. We're going to show you that the things that happen to us today, no other nation on the earth is going through. Yes. Because you don't see any other nation marching down the street, do you? Do you see that uh, East Indian man marching down the street talking about Indian rights matter? Do you see that? No. Yeah. Read. The book of Daniel, chapter 9 and verse 12. Yeah. And he had confirmed his word, which he spake against us, and against our judges that judge us, uh -huh. by bringing upon us a great evil. One of the great evils is that we would have great poverty. Right. Yeah. Every right. aspect of our life, we have to go to him for our food, our water, right. our clothing, right. and all things and aspects of our life, we have to go to our enemies. We for under the whole heaven, under the whole heaven, the whole earth, we have not been done uh -huh. as have been done upon Jerusalem, has not been done unto the Israelites. Right. Nothing that we've gone through, no other nation has gone through. Give me verse 68. I'm going to prove this. I'm approving. The Bible says that we must prove all things. So that's what we're doing today. We're coming to our, on the streets as Christ commanded us to teach the good news that if you repent, the kingdom belongs to you. That's yes. right. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. Bring it out. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So God said he will bring us into Egypt again. So you are a minister. You read the Bible, right? When we came out of Egypt, right, do we ever go back again as a nation, as the Israelites? When you read through the scriptures. Did the Israelites ever go back into Egypt again as a nation? No. No. 
You will never read that. So this is a future prophecy. This happened after these um, these scriptures were written. Bring it out. Give me uh, Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. Read. Bring it out. The book of Esther, chapter 20 and verse 2. Bring it out. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. So God took the Israelites out of the land of Egypt. Read. Out of the house of bondage. Out of the house of bondage because Egypt means slavery. Egypt means slavery. What's the name of that book? Zerah. Zerah. Egypt means slavery. So what we're going to read this is very important what's going to come up next. Deuteronomy 28, 68. Bring it out. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. Uh -huh. Bring it out. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. Into Egypt. Listen to it, Zerah. Into Egypt slavery bondage. Read. Again, uh, with ship. With what? With ship. What nation of people went onto slavery onto cargo slave ships? Bring it out. Tell me what people went onto slavery on ships. Can you name one? We just read that no nation on the earth has ever gone through what we gone through. Uh, That's how uh, we know that we are the true children of God. We are the Israelites. Uh, we by the way, where else I spake unto thee. So exactly how Moses is explaining it, it's exactly the way it's going to happen. Yes, right. Thou shalt shall see it no more again. Meaning we never saw our homeland as a people again. Right. As a nation of people, we have never gone back to Jerusalem. Right, that right. is our true homeland. We have never gone back. But where are we gone? We brought to Disney World. Right. We brought to L.A. We we this is our homeland. God said, no, the homeland of, Jeru of the Israelite is Jerusalem. Yes, right. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. So when we got off the ship, we were what? Sold unto your enemies uh -huh. for bond men uh -huh. and bond women. And no man shall buy you. So God said when we got off the ship, there's a sign that says, um, it has the Negro. It's a, it's a map. Is that it? On the back? Yeah, that's it. So look at this sign right here. We just read the scripture that the Israelites will be put on cargo slave ships and be sold to their enemies, right? That's right. Look at this sign right here. It says, to be sold, a cargo, a 94 prime healthy Negroes. Who are the Negroes? Bring it, Bring it out. Bring it out. Who are the Negroes? We are. Yes. We are the Israelites. Yes. We are God's chosen people. Yes. And guess what? We have the historical proof and the scriptures to back up what we're saying. Yes. Yes. Right. So now that we know that we're Israelites, what do we do now? Bring it out. What do we do now? How do we change the condition that we're in right now? Bring it out. What's the, would you have an answer for us? A suggestion? Repent. Repent. I like that. That's exactly what we need to do. We must repent and keep God's commandments. Yes. Repenting is keeping God's laws. Yes. I'm going to show you real quick one of God's laws that you can keep right now. Give me 1 no. Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. Bring it out! I'm going to show you one of the commandments that God had commanded us to keep. Because if we want to get out of these conditions, we must follow those commandments, right? right? So what am I applying? I'm applying love to you, brother, because I want you to achieve the kingdom. That's I right. want you to have everlasting life. So right. I'm going to share with you one of the laws that we're supposed to keep. Read that. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 1. Bring it out! Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Verse 3. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So the head of every man is Christ, right? Three. And the head of the woman is the man. So guess what? The head of the woman is the man. Did you know that, Gerard? The head of the woman is the man. Read. And the head of Christ is God. Read. Every man. Praying or prophesying. Any man that is praying or prophesying or listening to the word of God, read. Having his head covered. Having his head covered, read. Dishonoring his head. He shows dishonor to his head. Who is our head again? Christ is our head. So when the, pro when the prophecies of God are coming out, and you have your head covered, you just honor your head. Right. So what should you do now, brother, that yeah. you know that you are dishonoring your head? What you gonna do? Did you talk 
talked about repentance. You don't believe in that. What don't you believe about that? That's the old covenant. We just read out of the book of 1 Corinthians. That's the New Testament. That's right. We read out the New Testament. Right. And guess what? The, the law, statutes, and commandments are not done away with. Right. Read Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Right. I'm going to show you. Because guess what got us into captivity? Guess what brought us here into Help. America? Didn't that happen after Christ died? So guess what? The laws are still in effect. Yes, right. Read. The book of Matthew, chapter 5 and verse 17. Uh -huh. Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. He said, think not I have come to destroy the laws or the prophets. So don't get the thought in your head. That's what Christ is saying, B. Right. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So when those people hear that, fulfill, oh, that's it. But we're going to read on, because most people won't go past that. Read on. So third, uh -huh. I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass. So heaven and earth pass. So are you still standing on the earth? Bring it out. And is heaven still here? Until heaven and earth pass, read. One jot. One mark. Or one tittle. Or one letter. Shall in no wise pass from the law. Uh -huh. Till all be fulfilled. So in no wise should we be not keeping God's commandments. Do right. you right. understand? Christ just said that he didn't get rid of the law. Right. But guess what? In the churches, they teach you that the laws are done away with. Right. Yeah. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.